Hi everyone! Today's video, we're going to be doing a bit of a weird one. I'm going to be showing you my medicalised bedroom. So I have a lot of equipment and a lot of procedures and it's been a real struggle to keep my bedroom as a bedroom, to make it feel homely. So I wanted to film this to kind of show what my room is like, but also where I have managed to personalise things. So the first thing you will notice is my bed is not a normal bed. It goes flat, but I can't sleep flat. So this is what you would have in the hospital. This is a hospital bed uh, that does all the fancy positions so it can raise your head, raise your feet, you can tilt, it can raise about two meters up which is good for cleaning beneath the bed I'm told. But yeah, this is really essential to me. It's an essential piece of kit. I know that it weighs an awful, awful, awful lot. Yeah, we won't be able to move this out of this room very easily. Something you will see behind me is this huge maternity pillow. Now, this is not a pregnancy announcement video. <laughs> it is just how I sleep comfortably. So because I've got joint issues and a muscle related condition, I'm in a lot of pain at night. So this allows me to position myself in a way that doesn't tweak my joints in the same excessive way that just sleeping without this kind of thing would. This is from Amazon and it was a really good buy. They don't make replacement covers for it, that's the only issue, so we have to wash it and get it back on within a day. It's really well stuffed but not too hard with the stuffing and I never wake up really having strained myself because of it, so that's great. I also sometimes sleep with a um, soft collar on when my neck is being a pain and that just allows some stability in an area that I have quite a few problems with. And to my right you will see this drip stand. It is pink, I am very happy. It is pretty new, I've only had it a few days now. This is made by Freeway Medical, it has four hooks and that allows for me to, so I've got two bags of saline hanging here and I connect those to my subcutaneous needles overnight and I also have this machine. Now this machine basically delivers all my medications which are in syringes at 60 mils an hour, so a mil per minute, and that is the rate that my bowel can tolerate processing medicines, and I've found that if I don't use this, I end up throwing up my medicines, and then I can't keep down any of my feed, so it's a vicious cycle. So I have to do these medicines really slow, they take hours, but it's really worth it for people with malabsorption and intestinal failure, things like this are really important and I wanted to include this in this video because I know for a fact I am, at very least I was the first person in the UK to have these machines in the community. So there may be people out there that are delivering medicine slowly by hand or that don't seem to be tolerating the medicines that perhaps they could be tolerating if they were able to trial a machine like this. So this machine is a an Alaris Plus enteral syringe pump. They are usually used on neonate wards like NICU uh, to deliver small amounts of breast milk to prem babies that can't um, eat by the normal way. And I found this during my six month hospital admission at Manchester Children's. That wasn't, it wasn't because I'd seen it on the ward, it was because I had a lot of time to do a lot of research. And I would be really, really stuck if I didn't have this in my life. So yeah, if that is an issue for you, I would look into this. My GP surgery had to purchase this for me. Now that I'm under continuing healthcare, the next time it will be their obligation to cover that cost. They are expensive pieces of kit, 
but again, it's something that keeps me off TPN. TPN is very, very expensive and also can be very damaging to your health, so you want to keep away from TPN as long as possible and measures such as this mean that I am able to and the same with the subcutaneous fluids so this is just two 500ml bags of normal saline which I will attach to needles that are underneath my skin at night and I have to recite them every three to seven days and yeah so that is my routine to try and avoid TPN. That and a elemental feed. So an elemental feed is a feed that is really, really broken down to like the bones of what you need and is really easy to digest. I'm on one of the feeds which are used as a last line for people. And although a dietitian recently suggested that I might be allergic to that feed, there are a couple of others that I can try to hopefully reduce my symptoms. So. I think it's always worth keeping an eye out on treatment innovations and yeah so that is it for over here so now we are looking at this unit this does look like a domestic unit but actually as you will see by the uh, badge this is freeway medical again and it contains all of well some of if not most of my equipment that I need to keep healthy. This does not include medication that is all stored downstairs, but yeah, so I'm gonna show you what is inside. Okay, so in the top drawer, um, these are gastric bags and extensions. So these attach to my gastrostomy, which drain my stomach contents. Um, and these are really, really helpful. Um, without these, I would be vomiting all day, every day, which as you can imagine, would not be fun. There was a time where I didn't have a gastric bag and I remember it so vividly because I was just so ill all of the time. The next drawer is the subcutaneous drawer. These are some dressings for my gastrostomy. We've got some gauze. Here we have got some alcohol wipes, more alcohol wipes there. These are dressings used to secure the needles. This is one type of dressing so it's just your standard yellow needle that you may be familiar with that just pops beneath the skin these are little needles used to check blood sugar uh, this is a blood sugar testing kit and this is another type of subcutaneous needle so I've moved up here so that you can actually see the detail this is a type of needle which I would describe as a push pin. So imagine you've got a cork board, that is your subcutaneous layer of fat and you just push the needle in like you would a push pin. That this bit then twists off and you can connect the fluids through that. Um, it's a really neat bit of kit, it just looks like a little button. Again this is something that we had to do research for so I'm going to include the name Saflo 90 and yeah it's being a real game changer and causes a lot less tissue damage than the yellow needles I mentioned before. So in this drawer I have got the majority, obviously not feed water medication, of the things needed to maintain feeding tubes and things. These are wipes because obviously my mobility isn't good, I can just grab one of these and clean my hands. We've got a thermometer, funnel tips for my feeding tube, we've got a pulse oximeter and an emergency alarm, scissors, masks, dressings for both my tube sites, we've got um, PRM medications and barrier creams, we've got eerie pods, the thing that you use to clean before you put a dressing on, I've got some orange oil which is what I use to help with the fragrance of my stoma bag. This was suggested to me in hospital and it has been a really good thing. Um, this whole thing is 50 mils and it was six quid off Amazon. So for a bit of uh, niceness, I didn't think it was too expensive. This 
is used to take the adhesive off my stoma bag. These are used to test the acidity of, so they're used more in NG tubes than in fixed tubes like I've got. We've got a stethoscope here and that is used just to make sure that my bowel is even functioning so it does go through periods of just not working at all. Got tape and yeah that's about it for this drawer. Next up we have got little fixing rings so because my output for my stoma is so watery these are used to give an extra layer of protection and touch wood so far they have prevented any leaks. Here we've just got bags to put my stoma waste in, size small gloves because my hands are tiny, um, we have got a blood pressure machine because we have to check my blood pressure multiple times a day. We've got stoma bags, we've got some a couple of convex bags which are essentially if shit hits the fan, <laughs> literally, um, then we've got that as a backup. A Yuri bag it's called, I can never say it out loud. It's essentially, um, it's designed for people who use urine catheters, put their um, bag in on their leg during the day but I use these for my gastric drainage bag um, because they mean that I can hide it beneath my dress and it's not another wire that everyone has to see. Next up we have got lots and lots of saline and giving sets because you can imagine it's 60 a month so it's a lot to store and it's a lot of equipment used. And finally we have a few Conti sheets. I've had to buy these. I don't know what I'm going to do in the long term because they're so expensive. But I guess I guess we'll see if I can get some prescribed. Hopefully I can. I've got a sharps box in there for those needles I was talking about before. I've got some overnight bags. So these bags attached to the end of my stoma bag and mean that I don't have to empty it in the middle of the night because I'm a full risk and the orange wipes are just used for cleaning around the stoma. And yeah, so that is it. I hope you found that interesting slash helpful if you're in my situation. I really like my room again now. So before I had the pink, I had very medical, very clinical. My room was like overflowing with medical equipment. It was just really awful. So I'm so pleased to have this equipment now. It's been pretty life-changing. And I know that might sound a bit cliche to some people, like, hmm, a cabinet, has, re has that really changed your life? But I think a big part of my depression has been a loss of personhood, a loss of being me. Yeah, so it's, it's been a really good thing. Um, things like getting my own bottom sheet for my bed. Just trying to make things homely again because just because it's medical doesn't mean that it can't be pretty. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this video made sense. It was filmed on the hottest day of the year. So I am obviously not at my best due to having a condition called temperature dysregulation. But if you did like this video, if you did find it useful, please do subscribe and click the like button. Thanks for being here. I'll see you again sometime. Bye.